Hey gamers, this is Kita, and today we have a very special playthrough of Majora's Mask. That is, I complete the game using only two pauses. This video is tool assisted in that I use save states, slowdowns, and re-records in order to get the final product. So. This video is not as optimized as you would expect a normal TAS to be. Rather, it's supposed to just be a clean playthrough to demonstrate what the route would look like. Now, I'm pretty proud of this. It's a very good demonstration of the crazy glitches that can be done in this game. If you're watching this, you've probably you're probably already familiar with like what you see in a speedrun of just beating the game, or 100%, or what have you, but there are glitches that are in this video that you've not seen anywhere else. It's It just all comes together so naturally, and you're going to learn something new, no matter how much of an expert. Alright, also I should I should mention that I'm just doing one shot at commentary, so I apologize for any uh bad or weird parts to it. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to the low pause team. Starring Glitches and stuff, Ring Rush, and Kafta. I apologize for using that voice. Anyway. Um they helped with the route, coming up with ideas and glitches, finally getting it to where it is now. Ring Rush started this project several years ago with uh, five paws, which slowly, over the course of the years, we reduced to where we are now. I should probably mention what a pause does. Even though that seems really unnecessary, <laughs> but I'll do it anyway, just for the sake of complete completeness. Excuse me. So, with the pause, you can equip uh, three items to your C buttons at max, and whatever items that you give yourself, you're stuck with them until your next pause. There's no other way to uh, put an item on C for you to use. So, with two pauses, that means we're just limited to two sets to use for the entire run. And if you know anything about Zelda games, you know that there's a ton of items that you're going to be using. Uh, and even with all the crazy glitches we have in this game, there's still several items that we need to beat the game. Like, for instance, we need Zoro Mask, Deku Mask, Ocarina, Light Arrows, Fire Arrows... Bow. If you if you want to do glitches, you're gonna want some form of explosives. If you know about that crazy stuff, I could go on, but we'll we'll get to all that as it happens. Like the point is, is that like going into this, it just seems impossible. Like how could how could you possibly beat this game under these conditions? But it all works out. So, let me actually get to the gameplay now. Uh, there's not really that much to say here because the intro is just always going to be the same. But fortunately, this route is pretty much crazy enough that it'll diverge from uh, what you're expected to pretty early on. And I think that's uh, pretty cool. I don't know, th this puts me in an awkward position, because <laughs> alright, ignore me. I'm not gonna cut that out though. That's too much work. I'll I'll 
start mentioning things as they're important and relevant. Well, I, c I could say some little tidbits about the making of this. So, in order to make this, I used BizHawk for the first time, which is an N64 emulator. Uh, previously, I used Mupin for recording and making my Majora's Mask videos, but Mupin is really infamous for desyncing a lot with Majora's Mask, and that posed a huge problem. So, in order to do this, I needed to work with a new emulator. BizHawk thankfully doesn't desync, so that was pretty nice. But and I also never really like did anything in a tool-assisted setting before, so I was learning as I went along. Um, overall, the quality of my play, I think you can watch it improve as the video goes on. And I, I guess some of that you wouldn't even notice because uh, the amount of save states I use, it was like a ton starting out in the beginning. Like I was going through each room so slowly, but I got I got the hang of it and I could get I could just breeze through it in the end real quickly. Also, another thing about this route is that, like, it's really cool in that, like, each of the four worlds has, like, their own, like, huge problem to deal with that makes, like, the route seem impossible. Like, <laughs> for instance, uh, the swamp, you're wondering, uh, how can you... Wait, what? What was the swamp's problem? <laughs> oh yeah, getting into Woodfall, how are you going to do that? Snow World, how are you going to use fire arrows for goat, and then be able to use light arrows to flip stone tower? Because you can't have fire arrows and light arrows equipped at the same time. Water World, you have... Uh, <laughs> all that bottle madness to collect the... New Wave Bossa Nova, and then the valley, well, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves here, you'll see. Anyway, this is a cutscene that many of you probably have forgotten existed, because you can skip it by pausing, and guess what we're not allowed to do? The answer was pause, by the way. Alright, so finally starting. This is gonna be different from here. One note there is that right on that frame, that was the first frame that you can reset because the game saves. So you can skip that little cutscene, it saves a little bit of time. So obviously in Clock Town we want to just like get out of first cycle immediately. So we're gonna do everything we need to do then get up and leave. Now in order to make time move faster, since we don't have the ocarina, we're gonna use grandma's stories. Cause she could just tell a long story, put us to sleep. We could get to day three with that method. A little, uh, thing that I did here. <laughs> uh, some of you might not have noticed that, but... Originally, when I was going through text, I was only mashing the A button. Mashing as in, like, auto-firing it. And not using B at all. Because if you auto-fire B, it leaves the text box up indefinitely. But B is used for quick text in several places. So, 
grandma's text there, I went through very slowly. It was weird. You, you would have to see it to believe it. Or just take my word. Alright, so you know how it goes. Make it day three with grandma, then you gotta make it night three with the scarecrow. That's that's no different than a speedrun. But right after this, this is this is where you're gonna see stuff change. Which is good. Like just over ten minutes in and uh we already got some differences. I won't I won't spoil it till it happens though. Alright, so keep an eye on the clock. Um something a few people might not know. Or several people, who knows. Uh, is that time during first cycle moves one and a third times faster than normal. And for those who don't know, you can simply backwalk against the right side of the guard to escape East Clock Town. It's very convenient. And if you do this during first cycle, or I guess I should rather say do this before having Ocarina, and none of the actors in Terminal Field will be loaded. I'm not exactly sure what the reason for this is, but that that's just how it is. And by actors, that's all of them, including this block of ice that's normally here. So we could we could just get up there, no problem. <laughs> what are we doing here? Good question, me. I already know, so. Well, anyway, I'm not gonna answer that. Too bad. All right, so th this part, I I, I couldn't really optimize it. Like I was just like, whatever. <laughs> I, I backwalked at an angle and just smashed A and just hoped to get over the boulder. I don't understand that trick at all. It just works. Like something. Like if you're able to backflip on that slope, you're you can get past the boulder. But I don't I don't know exactly what makes it happen. It's better to not question what the MM gods have allowed to be possible. I think it would be interesting for me to watch this with having no idea what was going on, because... Okay, okay, new, new plan, I'm not gonna like, think to myself out loud. I apologize again. Alright, so if you haven't figured it out already, I am heading towards the Lens of Truth cave. Look at the time, by the way. Like, I have to be able to get to the clock tower before the moon crashes. And if it took me from 6 to what time it is now, by that logic, getting back is just not gonna happen. So, also, the invisible platforms here, they're uh, set depending on what day it is, and Deku's barely able to get past them. And in order to do that, like you can backwalk to build up your speed, and then turn around and jump, or you can spin forward, and if you're facing the right way, when you f jump off the edge, then you can get a good boost of speed. Alright, so it's already midnight, the clock tower's open. I have to somehow get back to clock town now. Before the moon crashes. Why would I do this to myself? Why would I 
make it night three if I don't have enough time. How is this video going to continue? Obviously there's a solution, but what is it? Okay, I guess we desynced. Well, never mind, show's over. Alright, please, please, I'm just kidding. Anyway. So... Why would I die? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll explain what just happened there. So, the thing about first cycle is that no matter where you are, the cutscene for the clock tower opening will always play. And the thing about that cutscene, it's a special cutscene, and that when you die, after watching it, as long as you don't load a new area, uh, you'll go back to South Clock Town, where the game put you during that cutscene. Which is very convenient. Basically got from the Lens Cave all the way back to Clock Town, where we needed to be, without any travel. Alright, so I got some rupees, cause... We need them. It's just not an option. It's not like I'm trying to help myself for the next cycle or anything. We, we just straight up need them. <laughs> Look at this movement. We need magic because... You, j you just need magic. There's no known way to beat the game without it. Just sit back and enjoy the good music. And, and, and the gameplay. That's fine too. Cutscenes, am I right? Alright, so now that we have magic, we need to get a move on. That's that's everything we need. Well, obviously not, because I gotta get rid of those rupees. I need to... Like, I got them for some reason, as I pointed out. bomb shop. So, I, even though I can't use any of them, I am free to look around. So I buy the bomb bag. No, that seems kind of pointless. Obviously I'm not going to be able to use bombs. Maybe not obviously, this game's pretty crazy. But, it should all be falling into place soon enough. Yeah, that, that's easy to skip. I'm not even gonna go over that. If you're interested in that, then you can start by looking at zeldaspeedruns.com. I apologize for plugging that site. Don't go there. I take that back. I apologize for badmouthing it. Go there. Alright, get ready. <laughs> get out your counters. Cause you're about to increase your pause count by one. 
I'm just to verify that this isn't cheating. More cutscenes. <laughs> I I promise that this commentary is not pointless. You, you need me. You'll get lost without me. First cycle is simple, so I'm making a fool of myself. Also, something I want to mention is that I like Jabo's uh, video plugin. Like, it seems to be the best one for Majora's Mask. But there's this weird thing during cutscenes. Cutscenes that normally have, like, this blurring effect. <laughs> it, like, blurs exactly half of it. You can see, like, a diagonal line going through it. It's weird. Yes, I agree. Please snap out of it. Alright, here's the first pause. Lens, bombs, ocarina. We're stuck with them until we pause again. That seems like a weird selection of items. Like, think about it. Lens of Truth, what do you ever use that for? I'm pretty sure you could beat the game without Lens of Truth. You can. I, I'm not kidding, you can. So, <laughs> we're limited, yet we're still getting that. Which is amazing. Alright, so... Where are we going? <laughs> what? Why didn't I get the Song of Healing? I'm done with first cycle. I have the Ocarina. <laughs> what more do you want? <sighs> Stay tuned. Do you see this cutscene? Probably not often. You know, it is possible to skip it. I could have skipped it. Go to up to a gossip stone, pull out the ocarina, cancel it, and walk right past it. But that only works on the way in. If I come back out, I have to watch it anyway, so. Sorry, more cutscenes. But after this, thankfully, this this cutscene pretty much marks, like, the end of the beginning section of this run. It only goes up from here. Yeah, I, I would say, I would say, like, if I was, like, to chart the interestingness of this run, it would be, like, a good storybook. It starts off, like, low goes up and up and up yep. until the climax and then you got your nice gentle slope down for the conclusion conclusion being like beating Twinwald and Majora like everyone knows how to do that I guess I may as well weigh down some MM knowledge bombs. So, this cutscene uses several uh, scene setups for Termina Field. And uh, if you were to change. Well, uh, maybe, not, maybe not, I shouldn't word it like that, but. <laughs> Consider a scene. Like, consider Termina Field being a scene. 
Like, the way cutscenes work in this game... Oh, we're done! Okay, I guess I won't explain it. Alright, no, I'm just kidding. Alright, so... Consider the scene of Termina Field. The way cutscenes work is that they take place on, like, an alternate setup of it. Or, like, they actually, like, place the actors there, do their little cutscene thing. So, one of those for Termina Field is the end credits, since there's sections that take place there. So, if there was a way to manipulate what scene setup you get from that cutscene, you could just beat the game right off the bat. Oh well. Alright, so back to two paws. What questions do we have? Why am I here? Where am I going? How am I going to continue? Because there is a giant Octorok in my way. Alright. So. Get this guy to shoot a rock at me. Do too many jumps, fall in the water. That makes me temporarily invincible. The rock hits me, I get super speed. Go past the first Octo, there's a second one behind him. That's just how they made it work. So... Yeah. DQ Palace. Amazing. Now, the thing about here is that I need Sonata of Awakening in order to enter Woodfall Temple. There's just no way around that. So, I'm going to try to get it now. And this absolutely should not be possible, but it is. I clip the wall by using an acute angle and enough speed. Backflip on that door frame, and backflip again. What was the point of that? It woke up that scrub. He's shooting nuts, like, at me right now. Backflip onto this thing, and there you go. And <laughs> now I'm on the second level. Welcome to Two Paws. That's how we get Sonata of Awakening. That's a nice little clip up to the platform. <laughs> I like how he like faints after he says, Who are you? as if that's supposed to be obvious. They kind of just assume that you talk to him first and try to cut his rope before pulling out the ocarina. So, hopefully this answers a few of your questions. Your questions being ones that I assume that you have, that I kind of just made up. As for, like, why we didn't just get a uh, Song of Healing already. It's because we need to stay Deku. If you didn't get the hint, I'm not going to be equipping the Deku Mask ever. So everything that I need to do as Deku, I should do now. That way I don't have to turn into him again. Because if I do, then I need the Deku Mask equipped on a C button. <laughs> I have good. So, we're not done yet. What else do you need to do as Deku? You need to open Woodfall Temple. Alright, I make it night now. It's v uh, well, <laughs> You'll see why. I'll... We'll get back to that. Alright, so these dragonflies lag the game a lot. A lot. So... Yeah. I should have killed them. I didn't. It's not a big deal. And here we have the conveniently placed.
play Song of Soaring. Very good addition to the game. I'm glad they did that this way. So, yeah, as I was saying before, the only two things that you need Deku Mask for, or I guess being Deku, as opposed to Deku Mask, you need you need to be Deku in order to get the Sonata of Awakening. The monkey won't teach it to you as any other form, and you need to be Deku in order to raise the temple. And I guess the whole point of both of those things was that it was supposed to be the trumpets being loud and whatever, whatever made-up excuse. Well, other than that, that's all... That's all you're gonna be forced to use Deku for. If we're creative enough, we can come up with uh, ways around everything else. I feel like I had to hiccup. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Alright, so now we're done with Deku. And we have Song of Soaring, so we can go right back to Clock Town. Just kidding. About about that last part. You can't use Song of Soaring unless you hit some sort of owl. Because otherwise it's just like, no, you, you can't use this. So now we have the problem of getting back. What are we going to do? And, no, you can't play a Song of Time. Like, Song of Time would take you back to Clock Town, yes. But, it would undo raising Woodfall Temple, which completely defeats the purpose. So, we have to find some way to get back. Which, if that doesn't seem hard, it's probably because you don't realize that there's a big Oxo blocking the way. We don't have bow or anything to kill it. And we also don't have that little Octorok to shoot a rock at us. So that we could get the super speed to go past it like we did before. Alright, so looks like deja vu. Haven't we seen this before? <laughs> Why would I go down <laughs> just to come all the way back around? That seems like a waste. But it's not. So maybe you're starting to get an idea of what I'm going to try to do. But I'm not going to spoil it until after it happens. At which point it's not spoiling anymore. <laughs> yep. So we use the same concept as with the little Octorok to get hyperspeed. Maybe hyperspeed's not the best word, but... <laughs> Our invincibility not only gives us speed, but it also makes us uh, invulnerable to the Octorok, so it doesn't just, like, <laughs> block us part way through. It's pretty convenient. The whole point of going around is that I couldn't get to the dragonflies without getting back up to those first set of flowers again. And that also explains why I activated that cutscene earlier that I mentioned that I could skip. Alright, 
so looking at the time, I'll just mention that the reason I made it night is because the old lady gets mugged on the first night at around 12.15. I don't, I don't know the exact time she comes in at 12, around a little after 12.15 she gets mugged. We're gonna want to see that. Why? Because we're sick. Sick as an ill. Ill as in dope. I, I apologize again. This is a cutscene that is pretty self explanatory. It's kind of ironic thinking about it because, uh,. The whole point of this cutscene is like, oh, you got the Deku mask, now you can transform into Deku anytime you want. But, we're not gonna do that. We don't want to do that. So, yeah, th thank you for that ability. The good part is that we're human now. Which is good. Because now we have a sword, and a shield, and the ability to use items. So, yeah. Pointless item. tidbit about this cutscene is that during this part right here with this whole uh, monologue on the English version they added a single text box in the middle of it for some reason nobody knows why they just did and speaking of version differences this is on this route that I'm doing is only possible on the English version. If you were to try this on Japanese, you would not be able to complete it. Why, you may ask? Maybe you weren't asking that. I'm asking for you. No, oh, just wait and find out. I'll explain when we get to it. No, I'll just say right now. So, uh, the English version added the ability to save at owl statues. The Japanese version, there's owl statues, but you, you don't get the quick save with it. You just hit them, soar around with Song of Soaring with them. That's all you do. Well, that's your hint. Alright, now we're done with that stupid cutscene. Just. Just action from now on. <laughs> Look at all this action. This is a really long dialogue. I don't know why. <laughs> Whatever. Alright. <laughs> Something I want to mention is that I really don't like this section of, uh, getting this silver ruby chest. Like, <laughs> Link's movement is so weird. I, d I don't really know how to explain it, but I couldn't get it to feel right when I did this section. Alright, so now got some rupees. And we are just in time to witness the mugging. <laughs> Interesting thing about this text box is that, as you can see on the back, 
Seikan is still running, even though it's up. And during that, time isn't moving. That wasn't important, but I just I just did that to make it a little more entertaining. <laughs> like, it's not like I need uh, time as a commodity. Alright, so now I got the Blast Mask. I'll, I'll spoil something right now. I'm never gonna wear the blast mask. So why did I do that? Well, when you save the old lady, you can buy the big bomb bag. There you go. Now we can hold 30 bombs. Now, the whole point of getting, uh... The 30 bomb bag is because bombs are so useful to us. Like, I assume that if you're watching this, you have some knowledge of uh, Majora's Mask glitches, so you should know how powerful the bomb really is. But in case you don't, think of bombs as <laughs> ammunition for glitches, which is a kind of silly way of putting it in the abstract. We can use them to hover, <laughs> assuming that we have enough of them, which you're about to see here. So the interesting thing about fairy fountains is that all five of the fairy fountains, Clock Town, and then the one for each of the four worlds, they're all connected on the same scene, even though only one of them will be loaded at a time. Well, one of the only the, the textures for one of them will be loaded at the same time. Textures and actors, I should say. So, even though you can't see the other fairy fountains, they're there. Like you can walk inside them, and the loading zone for the exit is still there and fully functional. So I just hovered to the Woodfall fairy fountain. Exited, and here we are. A good way to travel the world. So I use this hovering to get inside the temple, since I don't have Deku Mask to do so. This is a really cool thing that I got. I apologize for including Seo. I didn't realize I did until uh, I played it back, and then I was like, eh, whatever, I'll keep it. So, yeah. There you go, now we're in Woodfall. Well, what do we need to beat Woodfall? Hopefully not too much, because we don't have a lot to work with right now. Can backflip onto that stump to make this next hover a bit easier. So, I'm going to need the, the bow in order to beat the game. May as well get it. This is the fastest way to it. <laughs> Whoops, hit that switch. Why would I need to do that? Good question. Where am I going? Yeah, I, I need more bombs. I don't have enough. Filling up bombs is a pretty important part of being able to do everything that I need to do. That's why it was a really good idea to get the 30 bomb bag. And we can hold more at a time. You don't need to fill them up nearly as much as if I just got 20. So, thankfully there's a convenient way to do this. 
a really nice part about this game is that most of the pots have set drops of what's inside it. That makes things really convenient. So, exit the room, go back in, you know that there's going to be a bomb in there. So, since we hit the ladder switch, we can climb back up, and Tal is right in the world. And now we can get the bow. somehow that qualified as a mini-boss. Alright, we got the bow. All we have to do now is beat the dungeon. Like... <laughs> no matter what we can do in Majora's Mask, we still have to be all four dungeons in order to beat the game. So I use an acute angle to clip into this pillar, which allows us to reach out of bounds. And remember what I said about the fairy fountains being on the same scene? Well, dungeons <laughs> Not the same case, in case you thought I was, uh, going with that, but every room of the dungeon, of each dungeon, is on the same scene, even though only one, uh, room will be loaded at a time, being the textures and the actors. So, all the other rooms are there, and the loading zone to the boss room also exists, since the boss room is on a separate scene than the dungeon. So with this in mind, if uh, I hover around this other room, it's important that I don't go inside it, because <laughs> I can't actually open the door since it won't be loaded. I have to like hit the loading zone itself in order to get to a door. And th there wasn't really anything I could do to speed up this hover. I can't mega flip because I don't have any explosives to stop my fall. So I can only just back flip and side hop. Alright, we're in there with two bombs to spare. Oh, but I will be using both of them. Just for the sake of it. You don't need them for this boss, but whatever. So, first bomb I throw is to get his attention. He jumps at me. I pick up this bomb flower. Drop it. Throw another bomb get his attention. Crouch stab the bomb flower to make it explode. So, the explosion of the bomb flower, <laughs> like, he's weak to it, and it hits him twice, so after that, just a few hits do him in. I'm not gonna pick up the heart container, who cares. There we go. One dungeon down, three to go. And like I said before, it only gets crazier from here. E each one is gonna outdo the next. Also, for those of you who are familiar with speedrunning, might be wondering, well, couldn't I store Song of Time and skip this cutscene? Answers no, because the very first remains that you get, you have to watch the cutscene for. 
And that's because during this cutscene, I'm going to learn the Oath to Order. And you need the Oath to Order in order to get to the moon at the end of the game. And there it is. So yeah, no, no skipping that. Get hype for Snow World. It's gonna be good. I don't, I don't really know what to say during these cutscenes except to advertise for this run that you're already watching. Which seems kind of pointless in retrospect. Um, something to note is that, well, before I said I was avoiding Song of Time. Because that would make uh, this thing, this temple, not be raised anymore. Now it's safe. I beat the temple. I don't know. There's nothing left to do here with it. Also, if Woodfall is the very first temple you beat, you get this cutscene. But only if you beat Woodfall first. We didn't have a choice in the matter, so I apologize. You're right, Tattle. Our next stop is the mountains. How keen. Yeah, I, I wasn't kidding, like, we can play a song of time, I'm gonna do it. It's faster to reset after saving than to watch that little back-in-time cutscene. Northgate? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Alright, yeah, I, I mentioned I don't like this section. I had to do it multiple times. That's great. <laughs> oh, boy. So, yeah, like, even though this is tool assisted, a lot of the gameplay is gonna look very human like. Which is okay, there's nothing wrong with that. I get, I get a little better with it as the run goes on, I think. Let's see a human do that back walk. They have several times since. No, there was no point in me saying that. Yeah, no, no matter what, you gotta wait for this bomb guy to get to the shelf or whatever. Alright, we got our bombs. Let's get a move on. I promised you guys Snow World, but first, a detour. So, what you saw there was a staircase hover in which I get off the ground using two bombs. Not only does it look cool, but I needed to do that in order to hover off the ground, because if you don't have enough height, uh, after a little while, the game just uh, puts you back on the ground. 
So with two bombs, I get enough... High... I, I don't... That, there was really no better way to word that, so... Yeah. Also, there's a Hess. This is pretty good commentary. I, I Hessed, and then I said there's a Hess. I'm pushing this guy to shore. Wow. I apologize. Zora moved his seat over in Ocarina of Time, and it seemed like it took forever. This walking cutscene is actually longer than that, so it's a Zora thing, I guess. I'd like to give some special shout-outs to... And up. Alright, now that more than half of you have closed the video, it's time for good commentary. As soon as this cutscene ends, I'm not gonna say anything now. So I have the Zora mask. Ugh, why would I get that? Why was that important? Obviously I can't use it yet, unless pause 2 is coming up right now. Which it isn't! So don't get any ideas. However, I do need it. Well, obviously you need it to beat the game, but... It was important that I get it before doing the snow world. But I'm not done with this place yet. So, if you're familiar with the layout of this game, you know I'm heading straight towards a fairy fountain. And you already know what fairy fountains are capable of. And I know I promised you the snow world. But it's still not time yet. We have more setup to do. So, if we're not going to the snow world, where are we going? Well, the way the fairy fountains are laid out is that they're actually put in order. Order being in quotes, but you couldn't see me do air quotes. I didn't actually do air quotes, but I could have said... Whatever. Anyway, you have Clock Town, 
at the far right. Then to the left is Woodfall. To the left of that is Snowhead. To the left of that is Great Bay. And then finally, to the left of that is Iconic Canyon. Since we're going to the left, that's where we're going. Once again, I use every bomb that I have. Feels pretty good. Get a bomb drop? That's always in that grass right there. And now a kind of castle? What? What? Nah. I, I just go in there to load the bomb plant again. I need to fill up on bombs. Like I said, bombs are pretty important. But, there's actually not that much bomb farming in this run. Like, it, it would seem like there is, but... For the, for the amount that you do, it's pretty tame. Now, this, this section, it's really important to have bombs. So, this part... <laughs> consider, consider it a build-up, if you will. A build up for the amazingness that's about to happen. exactly sure why, but this has been happening to me ever since I finished high school. Alright, last bomb drop. Let's go. Also, to make a point of how serious I was about my bomb count, I didn't hess there. <laughs> Alright. So... Here we are in Stone Tower. Now normally, you need both the hookshot to get up to the towers, the hookshot towers, and the allergy of emptiness to move the switches which, once again, I'm assuming that you're familiar with speedruns, and they're like, when they did climb Stone Tower, you would just hover across the gaps. Wow. But they had hookshot. We don't. And we only have 30 bombs. So how could we possibly get from the very bottom of Stone Tower to the top? Yes, I just hovered off a of keys. Alright, thankfully, we have a Beamos to give us a bomb drop. That's very helpful. <laughs> Every explosion is precious, so... That won't be the last key, CC. I have to be really creative with how I get up here. It's not this. This is not just a simple hover. This isn't your grandfather's hover. This isn't your father's hover. This is my hover. Let's go. Yeah, 15 bombs left. That's not gonna cut it. At this rate, we're never gonna get to the top. I always have some tricks up my sleeve. Alright, so, I make it night. This does two things. 
number one. It brings the Beemos back. We can use it for another bomb drop. Number two. The position where I played Sangha double time is saved. So when I void out, I get respawned there. And every time I void out, the Beemos comes back. With that in mind, we can use the Beemos to fill back up our bombs. But don't think that makes this easy. There's only two Beemos in the entirety of Stone Tower. And there's certain locations where <laughs> you're not going to just be able to jump off and land by a Beemos. Like, we, we don't have that privilege. So, we still need to be very careful with how we use our bombs. If we can even get to the next area with them. Alright, so this one right here, this is a monster hover. It's probably the longest hover that you'll see. Keep in mind, our bomb count is very important. The section was pretty difficult to do with 30 bombs, and it has to be done, because basically we have to get from one Beemos to the next. And this is the only way to do it, is <laughs> we hover directly to it, with the help of the keys. Like, if I hovered to anywhere else, and ran out of bombs, there would be nowhere for me to farm bombs again. So I could just barely make this. Making that hover is not enough, you need an extra bomb in order to kill the Beemos, or else you're not going to get any bomb drops. Alright, and I employ the same technique. Now that I uh, advance time again to day 2, I have a new respawn point, so now if I void, this is where I'll end up. And our trip to the Beemos is nice and short, so it won't take very long at all to get the bombs that we need. I apologize for my movement. <laughs> it, it wasn't important enough to fix. Another benefit about making this uh, tool assisted is that when we need that bomb drop, we can get it. Because sometimes you'll kill the Beemos, you won't get the bomb. Thankfully, every, every time I kill it, I'm getting this bomb. RNG manipulation. <laughs> yeah. 
and farmed just so that I'll end up with 30 again. I'm really proud of how the bomb counts worked out in the entirety of this run. Another staircase. We have the Zora Mask, and it would actually help, because we could just uh, use Zora to climb on top of the Hookshot Towers without hovering. But alas, we can't equip it. Not without pausing. So, hey, we'll need to hold on just a little bit longer. That keys flew by and did not help us. Unfortunate. This one does. That was a sick mega flip. Alright. New respawn point. And if it's okay to say, this is the last one. So, pretty clean. Don't have to farm that much. Well, we are going all the way down to this first Beemos. This one's a longer farm because he's so far away. Like, think about this. We climbed this high up using our limited explosives. And this will be the last farm. Like, I mentioned being tight on explosives, but from here, we have enough bombs to reach the top, which seems pretty amazing. But we still have to be clever if we want to do it in this amount. Meaning, any height we can get, we should be using. That's why I'm hovering on top of this hookshot tower. And then to this ledge coming up. And now on top of this block. Like, if we can use it, we're going to use it. From here, you could just jump to the next ledge. Alright, so it might have looked like an accident to get hit by that keys, but I actually want really low health. Which I forgot when I was making this. So what back when I got like the two heart pots, I was meant to only get one. Well it's not a big deal at all. I'm running low on bombs, and I said I wasn't farming anymore, so that must mean we're close. And there you go. Truly a beautiful use of bomb counts. Used every single bomb. There's another to lower my health. What am I doing with this pot? Why did I just go on a switch? Oh, I'm gonna place the pot there because it's only temporary. 
No, I'm not. Because that doesn't even work in this game. Alright. So, if you die and then heal yourself before the death animation happens, you do time stop, which stops cutscenes from playing. Cancel it with C up, and the buffered cutscene of the block going back happens. And with that, I'm in Stone Tower Temple. But how much of it can I do with just these equips? Well, I'll give you a hint, I'm not going to be able to beat it. <laughs> At least not with these equips, because you need white arrows to flip the tower. I don't have light arrows equipped, and when I get them, I'm not gonna be able to equip them without pausing, so... That'll come later. There you go, there's your... quick way to get 30 bombs again. Alright, so... <laughs> that was a backwards long jump pretty ill, if I say so myself. <laughs> I wasn't even trying for it, it just happened, and I had to keep it. Right, old school strats hovering over the sunblocks. Alright, I don't have Zora Mask, but I do need to go in the water. So I Ocarina Dive to get in here. I need to get to the top. Very thankfully, this guy exists. <laughs> he saved us. I, I don't think there would be any other way for us to do this without him. But now I'm gonna skip him. Okay, thanks a lot. So we got our key. We can continue on the dungeon. Alright, so... I apologize for this room, <laughs> just this room in general, for a few reasons. Which, if I didn't say anything honestly, only a few people would probably notice. But I do want to mention it just for the sake of it. Number one is that I hovered with like a poor angle. I could have saved two explosives on that hover. And number two, this one was more out of my control. I farm bombs here, even though I don't really need them. And that's because the route changed in the middle of me making it. And I kind of had to shoehorn a section in afterwards. Alright, so Garo Master, he gives us the light arrows, which is exactly what we're looking for. Uh, also, I should probably point out that jump slashes do twice as much damage as a normal sword slash. So, when I attack enemies, I'm probably gonna wanna jump slash them. Alright, the light arrows. 
I think it's kind of funny that you see me getting all these items. More items than I can possibly equip with paws. But I'm still not even done collecting items, so... Just wait and see. <laughs> oh no, I died! That, that was, um... Alright, I was gonna say something sarcastic about that, but... I'll choose to look like an idiot instead. I was completely serious. Alright, so... I'm sure most of you know about the Hidden Owl. Basically, West Clock Town has its own owl that you're normally not supposed to be able to reach. Although, most of you probably only know it for being able to index warp, which is... We <laughs> hit the owl and then we can sort of other locations. We won't be doing that in this run. We can't do that. I already hit other owls and use them. So, what purpose would I have going to the hidden owl, you may ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. Alright. Before that, first I make it Song of Double Time. Well, I play Song of Double Time to make it day. This does two things for me. One, it makes it day three, which I need it to be. And two, it saves my spawn location, similar to how we did that in uh, while climbing Stone Tower. So now I store Song of Time. That is, I fall while playing the Ocarina. I play the Song of Time, it, it's saved. Now I hit the Hidden Owl and save at it. So there's something in this game called Mayor's Warp, which probably isn't a good name, but basically, if you save at an owl and then... Uh, gain control again before the text that says ye who have shown your sword to me that text there's a certain variable that's set that has interesting properties that I'll touch more on when we use them which will be very soon so yeah you won't be wondering that long all right so this was the part I was mentioning earlier that I had to shoehorn in I need to get a Pona So, on day three, the boulder's not here. That's pretty convenient. But, for those familiar with this game, you should also know that you can't actually get a Pona on day three. <laughs> it has to be day one. So, you see right now, Romani's like, man, whatever. That, yeah, like, you're not getting a Pona. She doesn't care about, like, the training and all that. Alright, so... I hit the Gopsa Stone. That brings up the Stored Song of Time text that I brought up earlier. I select Yes to save. That activates a glitch called Zero with Day, which is saving while Mayor's Warp, that glitch I mentioned earlier, is active. Glitch, or value, or whatever you want to call it, where you save at the Owl and then <laughs> interrupt it. So. Zeroth Day has a good effect in that not only does it uh, save... Uh, I don't know how to word this, but basically, it makes it day one again, which is one of the effects, the, the effect that we're using this time. Zeroth Day also has another effect that, since there's a cutscene, I guess I'll explain now. When you save with Zeroth Day active, there is a state restoring effect such that after selecting yes to save with Song of Time, for about three seconds, anything you do will be undone to what it was three seconds ago. Which sounds confusing, and it is confusing, but that's that's gonna be important later and 
hopefully I'll be able to touch on it in a way that makes more sense when we get to that. But first we have to get a Pona. <laughs> so, we got this balloon in the game. Which I hated doing. I, I really don't like aiming at you even though, but... 13 seconds is better than anything non-TAS, so that was good enough for me. Epona. Now, what could I possibly need Epona for? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. You'll see. I've said that too many times throughout this entire playthrough. I shouldn't even be asking these rhetorical questions. Alright, so now, I play as long a time. However, I can't reset after selecting yes. And that's because of some BizHawk related thing for some reason. I'm not sure why, but if I tried to reset here, it would restore my old owl save. Well, it's not a big deal, just watch that cutscene. Although it is important to note that if Mayor's Warp is active and you play Song of Time with ammo, like any ammo that uh, goes away with Song of Time, such as rupees, bomb count, stuff like that, it deletes your save file. And you won't have a save file unless you save again. Uh, yeah, just, just saving. It has to be with Song of Time, though. Like, if you try to save an owl statue with your file gone, it will it will still be gone. All right. So, <laughs> with all this out of the way, we can finally go to the Snow World. But. First, I have to deposit exactly 9 rupees, and that's for the reason I just mentioned earlier. When you save with Mayor's Warp active, I don't want it to delete my file. So right now I have a file because I saved after I had no ammo. So. There, I'm at a clean zero rupees. So it's important that when I save, I don't have any bombs, so... This run will live up to its... good uh, word of using all its bombs wisely. Also, these sessions were fun to do. backflip right through that ice. It's silly. <laughs> All these recoil flips off the tech tights. Just showing off at this point. Alright, so, so far we've used bombs a lot, and we've used Ocarina a lot, but we have Lens for pause one, so obviously there's some reason for us to have it, and so we could climb this ladder, duh, like, how else am I gonna know where to go? No. So, the thing about Goron Mask in this game is that you actually need Lens of Truth in order to get it for some reason. Like, the developers did not want you to just go in here and play Song of Healing and be done with it. 
blood. All they all they check for is uh, use lens to make sure he shows up, and then play song of healing, which I guess makes sense because. If you're playing through again, you could just skip the part where you follow him here. And if you're playing for the first time, you don't accidentally have someone visiting the gravesite and playing Song of Healing, and then wow, suddenly go on mask for no reason. So I, I, I don't blame them for doing that. But it cost us a precious C button. Because we really want that Goron Mask, even though you don't need Lens, and you don't need Goron Mask to beat the game. So, a very odd selection of items we're getting, considering how limited we are. Alright, and with that, we now have the Goron Mask. Well, not quite yet, but right right there, when it's over your head. Wow. So, that'll come in handy. Alright, so what's left to do in the snow world? Well, nothing really. Just gotta beat the temple. That's all that's technically required to beat the game. Don't even need the Goron Mask to beat the temple. Alright, so in order to get across this gap, I do a really old strat to uh, get across this one. But that's kind of slow, so... We'll earn some swag points with this one. I'm not sure if you could do that over the first gap, so... Oh, well, best of both worlds. You get both gap cross methods. Alright, well, I don't have the Goron Lullaby, but I am going to get in the Tumble. How, you may ask? This is how. Alright, so... Getting ISG, or Infinite Sword Glitch, keeps you from falling off ledges. But the wind is, like, still super powerful, so it still blows you around. But I use my Hess speed to uh, travel as far as I can during the moments of time that I'm not getting blown around. And with this, well, we can <laughs> ride this bad boy all the way to the top. I need to stop saying the phrase bad boy. I had to do this section three times. The first time I did it, I had like, I had like godlike wind. Which it was unfortunate I couldn't get that again, but I think execution-wise, I probably executed this one better. Alright, so now we gotta beat this dungeon. Um, it's very important that I don't pick up any ammo, because like I said, I need to make sure I have zero of everything before I play Song of Time. So I need to avoid rupees, I need to avoid arrow drafts, and I need to use all my bombs. So, it turns out the fastest way up the temple is the anticlimactic hover to the second floor. Although, this hover actually has a cool thing, because I wind up getting really close to these spikes. It looks like I'm touching them, pretty much. I'm, I'm not exactly sure how that wound up working, but it did. And there you go. So, one of my favorite things about the mechanics of this game is that the distance of your jump depends entirely on 
how fast you're going. So, you can get a longer jump by uh, using a bomb explosion to push you off the edge. It's pretty cool. Wizard is Wizard Like, what are you gonna do? Um, there's two phases to Wizard and before he starts it, he'll always pop up in this square right here. And then once he's up all the way, a little cutscene will begin, and he'll be in his second phase. But you have a small window where you can just hit him. So, yeah, we, we won't be doing that. And now, the fires. <laughs> Adding more to our collection of items that we have, but do not have equipped. Alright, so that snowball always has an arrow drop in it. So, I made it a point to just like pick it up and throw it out of the way. Alright, so... Hover out of bounds, and I can store Song of Time. <laughs> I made it a point to wait to the long or latest point possible to store it. Like, I did it so late that it didn't even, like the staff didn't even pop up on the screen, but it's stored. Take my word. All right. Also, I forgot to mention, but you can just recoil flip past that ice. It's really nice. This hover is weird in that, like, that snowball is very particular in if it'll, whether or not it will blow up or not. And I just super slide past other snowballs because I have to use my bombs to cross this gap. Alright, do a mega flip here, and we have precisely one bomb to do this boss key skip. Beautiful. Alright, well, you need fire arrows here, so what am I gonna do? Right, there's an arrow pot. Pause. Equip light arrows. Go on. Zora. Activate storage. Equip fire arrows. Save before the fire arrows get equipped. Zeroth day happens. Well, what does that do? The state restoring effect that I mentioned earlier in the run. Whatever your state is, as you press yes to save Song of Time, you have three seconds to do whatever you want. And then it goes back to the state it was, uh, <laughs> the state it just was, like, before those three seconds. So, you see the fire arrows on C, but those aren't fire arrows that I'm shooting. I'm shooting light arrows. Well, now I'm out of magic, so these are normal arrows. So, basically, the stored Song of Time with Mayor's Warp allowed me to have light arrows on C down when I saved and then within my three seconds I equipped fire arrows on C down and shot a fire arrow and it was restored back to the light arrow <laughs> simply beautiful So, that was our second and last pause of the run. That means... We have two boss remains, Dola and Goat. And we have to beat the game without pausing ever again. So, we have to get inside... And beat both... Great Bay Temple... And... Stone Tower... With our current equips. <laughs> but... How could this happen? You need a bottle to catch eggs for New Wave Bossa Nova. You need Ocarina to play New Wave Bossa Nova and to play Oath to Order. Well, well, what am I gonna do? <laughs> oh, 
all these and more will be answered. Also, no, I couldn't skip this cutscene either, because since I used my stored song of time before the boss fight, <laughs> I couldn't store another song of time to use to skip the cutscene. Alright, so now I'm here. I don't have Ocarina, so anywhere I have to go, I just have to walk there. Take the long road home. So, we gotta just get out of here. Alright, so... I'm actually not entirely sure if you can <laughs> backflip through this ice on the way back. I couldn't get it, I just shot it down with arrows, why not? Alright, so get ready for the craziest setup of all time. Okay, so step one. Actually, I'm not going to number the steps, so there's too many. Alright, so first. I apologize for saying the word first. Alright, so, lose my sword. I'm swordless now. I'll explain why when we get to it. Now, utilizing the advantages of playing on the English version by saving at this owl statue as Zora. That's important. Keep that one in mind as well. Now... We're going to copy this owl save, load the second file, alright, so the stockpot inn opens at 8, I get there a little early and open it as soon as I can. What's the point in going here? Well, the revenge of grandma. Now, earlier I said I messed up the text boxes. I got it right this time. That salty run back with grandma. Alright, so, use her to make it day three because I don't have Ocarina all over again. Well, I do, but I can't use it, obviously. It's not equipped. So why would I make it day three? Well, let's see. I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, so I'll just wait till things happen before I say them. Magic manipulation. <laughs> I get the magic drop because what's about to happen is magic. Alright, so, day three, the ranch is open. If that boulder was there, I couldn't, I couldn't, like, get to here. And I need a Pona. And I can't play a Pona song because I don't have an ocarina, so I just had to do this. Alright, so, I have a Pona. Now we get a Pona out of the ranch. And a Pona is going to be our best friend for pretty much a large section of whatever's left in here. Apona is our two paws mentor. Alright, so save at the owl while on Apona. This actually stores Apona. So when we load our first file, there's Apona. So that actually did something special in that when you're swordless 
and you're on Epona as another form. When you get off Epona, it will put uh, blank B. Okay, since I was Zora, it put blank B uh, as Zora. Since I had uh, blank B as human. <laughs> so, okay, but basically a better way to explain it is that like... When you're on Epona as a transformation, it gives you Human Link speed button. And since I have no sword, it puts a swordless state as the transformation. So, Blank B as Zora has a very special property that I'll get into. First, let me explain what's happening right now. So, I made it night using the Scarecrow. And now I have to buy my sword back, because I need, I need my sword again. Curiosity Shop opens at 10. And, uh... I need 50 rupees to buy it back, so... Anything that happens now is... Just, uh... A time filler. Which is good, because now I can explain the Zora B button thing. So, right now I have blank B as Zora, and what does that do? Well, we have blank B as a transformation. Instead of actually being swordless, what it does is that it uses the action value for whatever word is on your B button. So... What does that mean? Well, for instance, if your B button says punch because you're a Zora and you like to punch, then the number of that text value on the B button in some uh, in-game chart corresponds to that value on the item list. Also right there, I stored an enemy death when I killed it as Goron, and it didn't die until I just passed it. So that looks pretty cool. Alright, so... Punch? The number for punch? Corresponds on the item list to the Hylian Loach, which is a beta item. But that's, that's not what we need. What we need is... Obaba's drink which corresponds to the word pound. We want the word pound on Zora's B button so that we can drink Obaba's drink and then have a bottle that we could use. Because how else are we going to catch eggs? But how are we going to get pound on Zora's B button? Stay tuned. Speaking of staying tuned, I still have to wait. I jumped the gun a little on standing in front of the store. It's not that bad, though. Alright, so there's our sword. Now we can slash things. I hiccuped. Okay, we are not done yet. Now, I need to save at this owl as human. This is important. Okay, so that was file one. Now we load file two again. The one where we saved at uh, Milk Road on Epona, and we have to get Epona again. Alright, so... 
I'm swordless on this file, but that doesn't matter. The only thing this file is ever going to be used for is to give file one a Pona. So, we're, we're good to go. Just save at the owl statue again. And then, when we load our first file, we'll be in Clock Town on Epona as human. Alright, here we are. But now, I'm going to save again. <laughs> Why would I do that? Well, when you save an owl statue on Epona, and then load that same owl uh, save, remember that text that uh, gets rid of Mayor's Warp? The one that's like, ye who have hit your sword shown something that if, if that never comes up we can use C buttons so I use the Goron mask to get <laughs> control of Epona Epona walks past the loading zone and then when I press A I warp back on the Goron to be next to the hidden owl then I could save at the hidden owl then when I load it I'm in the mayor's residence so, that gives us Mayor's Warp again, since we lost it when we loaded the Owl. And, it also did something else. Which you'll see shortly. Actually, since I'm waiting and there's a lot to say, I'll start explaining it right now. So, remember how I said getting on Epona as a transformation gives you human speed button? Well, I have sword now. I'm not swordless. But, if you are on Epona in an area where the B button is dim, that is, you can't use the B button, such as a house like the mayor's residence, for example, where I just was, and then get off Epona, you get Ocarina on your B button. And that is very convenient, how <laughs> just saving at that Owl statue as Goron, like, did those things. And now I come all the way here just to store Song of Time. Which, it's very nice that that works out. It was a little seam that I went on, and like, I got like a pixel to work with or something. I had just enough time to store Song of Time. Like, the staff didn't come up. Like, frame perfect. So now I have Song of Time stored, and since I saved at the Hidden Owl, I have Mayor's Warp active. Meaning, I'm ready to do Zero with Day. So, the state restoring effect is gonna help us here. I put on the Goron Mask. But it forgets that I did that. So the game thinks I'm Zora. So when I get pound on my B button to drink Obaba's drink, it essentially does that for Zora's B. So the game thinks Zora's B is an empty bottle because I just drank that drink with the help of Goron. So, we have a pretty good setup right now. We have Goron Mask, Zora Mask, Light Arrows, and we have Ocarina on Goron B, Bottle on Zora B, and Sword on Normal Human B. <laughs> and we're not done with Epona yet. And also, don't think that this puzzle is anywhere near over. There's still a lot more problems we have to deal with. Like, even though we now have access to a bottle and ocarina, there's still more challenges. 
such as there's seven eggs we need to get but with our current equips some of them are out of reach just straight up out of reach we can't climb high enough to get in the aquarium for the eggs because you need hookshot for that or bombs to hover or something we can't hover off of anything and we're not going to be able to use the hookshot at all so we need to come up with a pretty clever solution but in the meantime we are perfectly capable of getting one egg right now just one because we have one bottle Alright, so I'm not exactly sure if the clip that you can do here is possible in the English version. So I just swam out the normal way. There's a there's there is a little clip where you catch the egg and then swim in the corner, you swim through the wall, and it takes you to the entrance. Which would have been cool, but I don't know of anything like that. Alright, so I got my egg, but now what am I doing? Well... We still have a Pona. We're gonna use a Pona to escape out of here. We're not ready to tackle this challenge yet. What's left to do, though? Good question. Alright, so it turns out I'm not done with the snow world. It seemed like I was done with the snow world, I mean... Like... I got the Goron Mask. I beat Snowhead Temple. What's left to be done? Alright, well, this section takes a long time, so I'll explain it again. Alright, so... Last time we were here, it was spring. But since we stored Song of Time to use Zeroth Day, it's now winter. But we're gonna store Song of Time again using this spot. This will be the, this will be the last time we need the spot for anything, so... It's not like we're traveling here all the time. Alright, so... Now you can see it a little better this time. Like, you can just roll up there. It's so silly how that's possible. And then from here, land very specifically. Just enough time to play Song of Time. And it's stored again. And in case I didn't make it uh, clear enough, when you store a song, it won't come up until the next text box appears. So... Once I bring a text box up, then uh, the option to save will happen. But a few things get rid of that. For instance, if I were to pull out my ocarina, I'd lose my stored song. So I have to be careful not to use ocarina for anything. And also... With Mayor's Warp... Uh, I can't song a Soaring anywhere, because if I do, I lose it. And that's because Soaring to an Owl brings up that text 
that I mentioned a few times before. The one that's like, ye who have visited with the sword. I reference that text off enough that I should probably remember what it actually says. But yeah, we don't we don't want that, because that'll get rid of Mayor's Warp, and we need zero of the day. Also, saving at the Owl gets rid of it, as happened earlier, where we had to save at the Hidden Owl again. Alright, so, Epona proving uh, as trustworthy as ever, getting us back here. Alright, so keep in mind, though the B button looks blank, I actually have a Zora Egg on it. Alright, so I hit an owl because there's only one more use of Zero Day for, for this entire run, and it's happening pretty much right now. Alright, so talk to the fish. That brings up this text box for saving. Our current state, we have an egg on B. Egg on B, egg on B, save. Okay, now we deposit an egg. Okay, the state is restored to what it was as we pressed yes, which is egg on B. Boom, two eggs. We deposited the same egg twice, so now there's two eggs in the tank. But that's not all. Because we did Song of Time, it actually put the eggs back in Pinnacle Rock. So now there's three eggs to get in Pinnacle Rock. Meaning we're essentially getting one of the eggs in there three times, which is amazing. And the reason this works is because um, Zora's bee bottle, the contents of it do not disappear when you play Song of Time. Like, normally when you, say if you catch a fish in a real bottle and then play Song of Time, it just disappears. But... You keep your egg, so that's how we're able to take advantage of this and use the same egg multiple times. But we're not going to be able to repeat this trick at all, because if we do Song of Time again, for any reason, we're eliminating the eggs that we already have in the tank. So we have two eggs in there, we have to get the other five legit. So. The three in Pinnacle Rock are going to be simple enough. Like, there's nothing you really need to do anything to get these, but what about Pirate's Fortress? How are we getting in the tank, or the aquarium tanks? And if we could, why didn't we just get all seven? Stay tuned. Also, a little thing to note is that sometimes, or you might you might have seen uh, some speedrunners use ocarina items at the bottom of Pinnacle Rock to soar to Great Bay to skip swimming back up. But you need Zora fins to be able to do that. We have Bottle on B, so yeah, that's not possible. You just gotta swim back up there. Alright, and to make things more interesting, uh, I split up the five eggs such that I go in between Pinnacle Rock and Pirate's Fortress, so it's not like I'm doing the same thing over and over. So, I'm gonna go to Pirate's Fortress right now, and we're gonna solve some problems. So I go and get magic, cause you need some, and arrows, because I'm gonna need arrows. Alright, so, Pirate's Fortress time. Alright, 
I made it a point to get some swag points for this part. And that is, I really like to take advantage of how blind and stupid the pirates are. It's fun. Alright. So, Goron actually has more use than just being able to transfer a bottle to Zora's B button with his pound. His pound can also open up the sewers, since we have no way of getting into Fire's Fortress without it. Like, we don't have the hookshot to cross the gap, we don't have explosives to hover across, we gotta go in legit. Also, it's important to keep in mind that when I have Zora B bottle, I can't use his fins at all. So that's actually important and will come up later. So like say if I need to use Zora Boomerangs, Zora Punch, even a jump slash, I can't do that. None of those things I'm gonna be able to do. So right here, I can't just shoot the switch, I have to... <laughs> I have to turn human just to hit it. Thank you, light arrows. Saving the day. Still have more switches to hit, so that's one, and then boom, another. And now we can get into the interior of Pirate's Fortress, which is really nice. <laughs> so keep in mind that all four eggs that are in here are in uh, aquariums or something. I don't know. I don't know what to call them. I love this part. What? Like, look. <laughs> Why can I do that? The pirate just does not notice me at all. It's amazing. Alright, so, as I was saying, there's four aquariums or whatever for the eggs. I need two of them from here. But I don't have hookshot and I can't hover up to them. So I need to be creative in what I can do. So I hit the hive to clear out this room. But keep in mind hookshot's not useful to me. Like I can't pause anymore so what am I going to do with the hookshot? Nothing. That's what. I'm not going to get the hookshot. But there is an egg in this room. Use Zora to do a <laughs> nice jump from the chest, which is enough to grab on and get this egg. That's really convenient that it works out like that. But. <laughs> Keep in mind that <laughs> this is the only room that has a hookshot chest. Like, it's not like you can just do this in the other three rooms, so... Also, also that was that was the text that I was talking about. Yee who... Eh, whatever. That got... I don't have Mayor's Warp anymore, so... If I were to store Song of Time again... It would just act like normal Song of Time. There wouldn't be a state restoring effect or anything. Everything's back to normal. Alright, more magic because I'm just breezing through it. 
Alright, so this time we're going to Pinnacle Rock. Picking up another egg. I already got the slowest egg, so... The other two eggs in here are not bad. They don't take that long to get. It would have been nice to have multiple bottles. That way you wouldn't have to take all these trips back and forth. Like, they, re they really make it a point to recommend having more than one bottle for uh, the egg quest. Egg quest is pretty ridiculous in this game. Like, we still can't skip it. So I swim into murky water there because it puts us a little closer to the owl than just swimming normally, which is nice. Alright, that's egg number five. There's two more eggs left, one in Pirate's Fortress, which I still haven't said how we're getting, and one in Pinnacle Rock, which I haven't said how we're getting, but is really obvious, so I don't have to say how we're getting it. Wait, like, you just swim and get it. There, I said how to get it. Alright, but we're going to Pirate's Fortress right now. Alright, so this time, I already opened the sewers, so we could just swim. <laughs> oh, right into there. That skipped a nice little section. And some of the sewer is already done for us since we just did it. But we do have to repeat some of the stuff that we already did. I'm not exactly sure why. Well, maybe it's technical reasons. Instead of, like, a design choice. Like, thinking about it, I can understand why they would reset the blocks every time you, uh, load the area. That seems like a pretty wise design decision. And this little thing, like, right here? Boom. They give you a little shortcut. Like, when you come back here a second time, uh, you don't have to hit that switch again. Which is a neat little thing that uh, a lot of people don't even know about. Because normally, like, when you go through the sewers once, you don't have to go again. They give the shortcut to you of using the hookshot. Like, this game is really smart about its shortcuts. Like, once, once it assumes that you've been somewhere, it will allow you smart ways to get back which works well with its time-based system also there uh i i waited a little bit which might not have been noticeable i waited a little bit just so it was night it turned night inside uh the sewers so i didn't get the cutscene all right so now another egg room but there's a barrel in this one no idea why. No idea why they put a barrel in this room, but. Thanks to that barrel, two paws can be completed. Thank you, barrel, for making this video possible.
those those other aquariums like there there's no trick there's no secret you're not getting the eggs in them but thanks to one barrel we can move on all right so this will be egg number six and then just one more egg we're really moving on and like once you get the final egg that's when this this run gets to be the best like like i i would say after this egg comes like only good amazing awesome fun stuff to watch oh you got some pinnacle rock in between man Think of it as calm before the storm. Alright, I will narrate this part in a very calm and soothing manner. Dolphin dives are faster than swimming below the surface of the water. Coming up above the water gives a slight burst in speed. And since I like speed, I like to dolphin dive. Remember when I got this egg the first time? Well, I'm getting it again. Wow, we now have seven eggs for this quest. But wait, how are we going to get the new wave bossa nova? We may have Ocarina on Goron B, but only Zora can pull out the Ocarina to learn the song. Well, I'm glad you asked, more annoying version of me. That's actually debatable, this is probably more annoying. Anyway, so even though we have Goron Ocarina B, it's really useless for learning New Wave Bossa Nova. We're pretty much stuck. Like, what am I going to do? Get Ocarina on Zora B? <laughs> well, it just so happens that no. No, that's not what I'm gonna do. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Alright, that's all the eggs. But I'm not going to get the song. Not yet. <laughs> There's no way I just did that and then I'm like, nah, I don't need the song. I just did that for the sake of it. That would have been funny, though. But That, that would have been an amazing way to like show off moon warp. Like, I never even did two paws. I'm just like, oh, by the way, we can warp to the moon. This was all a ruse. But no, that's, that's not what's happening. Alright, so... Every rock in Great Bay actually has bugs underneath it. I'm not sure about that design decision, but that's just how it is. Okay, so we got bugs. Catch the bugs in here. We have the bottle in our hand. We can now do bottle time stop. After this cutscene, of course. Don't want to do it before the cutscene. So, the thing about Bottle Time Stop is that not only does it cue cutscenes, but if you do them next to a Gossip Stone, or actors that you pull out your ocarina in front of, like you pull out your ocarina and a cutscene starts, you can play the ocarina using your bottle, which is amazing because it allows this to happen. It's very convenient. So, actually keep that in mind because <laughs> Goron Ocarina B is also not going to be useful for 
uh, raising the turtle. I'm going to have to use Zora for that. But there's no actor where I can pull my ocarina in front of. Like, there's no cutscene for me to pull my ocarina in front of Lulu. So I can't just do bottle time stop in front of Lulu. Also, I should probably mention that I did Song of Time there to make my file. Okay, so basically, the last time I did Zero with Day, I had ammo, so my file was deleted. So, by playing Song of Time, now that I have New Wave Lost Nova, where it was completely safe to, I have a file, which I need <laughs> in order to actually beat the game. Uh, because I'm gonna be using an owl soon enough. Alright. So, Bottle Time Stop won't work in front of Lulu. However, it will work in front of a Gossip Stone. So that's where we're heading right now. Alright. Still have bugs from last time. Very convenient. Alright, don't blame Kareemless this part. Bottle Time Stop. <laughs> See up. And now we can play Ocarina Notes. You notice how stop is on B? Like, we are in straight up Ocarina mode right now. So, I can play songs and move around and stuff. Right there, New Wave Boss Nova. Get magic and arrows, because I need those. There you go, there's the turtle cutscene. Alright, but we're not out of the woods yet. So, here's a question for you to ponder. So, think about this. The turtle is really high up. How do I get on top of the turtle? I don't have hookshot. I don't have bombs to hover with. <laughs> I can't just, like, dolphin dive up there. It's really high up. Like, Goron boost, Goron pound. None of that will work. Alright, so, let's see what happens. How do I get in there? Well... I mentioned I was going to use an owl statue. So, let's get this out of the way right now. Alright, so, save at this owl, file 1 is Zora. Remember that. Now load file 2, my file specifically for transferring Gapona, so it's spoiler, I'm going to be transferring Gapona. So somehow Opona is going to help us get into Great Bay. <laughs> Using all the concepts that I mentioned doesn't make any sense. There's no- there's nothing I said earlier that Opona can do that will help us. <laughs> or is there? Alright, so... What you may or may not remember is what I said about the B button. Since I have sword on Human Link's B button, get on opponent Azora, save at the owl again, 
and then get off. I have fins. That's all I need an opponent for. I have fins now. So now I can punch and boomerang and all that. But how does that help me? What am I gonna do? Jump slash in? No. Get ready. Alright, so. Lure the like lake to land. Get underwater. Have the like like eat you. Die. You're still in the like like grab state. Swim into the shore, and now you're stuck. You can't move other than punching. But, you keep your vertical height when moving, so you're essentially walking <laughs> over water. But, even further, is that if you punch onto a land very slightly higher than what you are, you'll gain height that way. So now I'm punching around while in this like-like grabbed state <laughs> in order to get a little bit higher. So you can probably see where this is going now. I'm trying to find land that's going to get me higher and higher until I can get onto the turtle. Which is easier said than done, because right now I'm still far too low to get on the turtle. A little side note is that this was probably like the first thing that I found that I was like absolutely blown away with. Like, this pretty much started me wanting to glitch hunt in this game. Found it on complete accident and I wanted to figure it out. And the rest is history. Alright, so we're using the scenery to our advantage. Alright. It just so happens that we have just enough height using our surroundings to be able to get onto the turtle. <laughs> A beautifully elegant solution to this. Alright, so there we go. And now the turtle is leaving without us. That's the silly thing about this. Well, it's okay. Well, we'll still end up in the temple. Alright, so, Great Bay might just be, like, I don't know how to word it, but it, it's going to be an entertaining watch. Like, you probably know about the boss key skip from the very first room, but we don't have bombs, we don't have explosives, so we're not going to do that. You can't, that's, that's not fun to watch anyway, like, we've all seen that boss key skip a million times. We're gonna do something much more stylish. Alright, so yeah, forget that room. That's a huge water wheel? I agree, Tattle. Let's use it. So I could push that turn key underwater and make the water jet appear, but no. We're a little too good for that. Get on this water wheel. Use the power of all my equipment to get to the main room. Not done yet. Alright, so target a wall while hanging off a ledge to ledge clip, swim out of bounds, jump slash right into the loading zone of the boss. Simply amazing. So, the thing about Out of Bounds Water, I didn't really get a chance to mention, but Out of Bounds Water immediately 
voids you out. So you can't freely swim in it. However, there is an exception, and that is, if there is land below the out-of-bounds water, you're free to swim in it. So that path that I took was actually extremely precise in order to get to that boss loading zone. I need to be careful not to swim in water that has nothing underneath, and I can't swim in a loading loaded area, because then I can't... then I'm just stuck in the walls. So, something about the Georg fight, which I like, is that you can just hit him. You can stun him with your own Zora magic by hitting his face when he's not in the I'm gonna eat you mode. Which makes for a really fast fight. That was a pretty good Georg. And with that, we're three dungeons done. But... It, it only gets crazier from here, because how are we going to even get into Inverted Stone Tower, let alone beat it? We don't have any explosives, so no explosives means no allergy skip. Well, at least not in the standard way. We can't pause, so we can't pause buffer the switch to shoot the light arrow. We're gonna need to be creative. And then once inside the temple, we don't have we don't have bombs, we can't like get anywhere. We can't we can't recoil flip to the Igor bridge room. Or yeah, the Igor bridge. So we can't we can't even get to the room with the boss door. We don't have hookshot to get to the top either. So, get ready for some crazy stuff. Alright. Wasting no time, we're just gonna go straight to Stone Tower. So, it's a really good thing that we already <laughs> hovered up and hit the owl. And we already have light arrows ready to use. Even though we don't have LG. So we don't have LG to hit the switch. We don't have bombs. We don't even have bottle anymore to get across the gap. So there I very precisely get ISG off the pot without breaking it. And I get a hover off of this keys. But you can only do so much with the keys. It's not like I can just hover all the way out of bounds with this thing and then shoot the light arrow at the switch to invert. What am I going to do with it, then? Well... <laughs> so, Mega flipped to this out-of-bounds, or not out-of-bounds area, but this section <laughs> that's supposed to be, like, the background surroundings. We could go all the way around to the other side, and aim our light arrow, side hop, barely be able to shoot it out-of-bounds. A very precise shot. Because that part of the wall wasn't solid. We could just side hop right there. And now we can get in the temple. But... <laughs> how... Can we possibly beat it? Like, when I say there's no way to get to the room before the boss door... The room with the boss door or anything... There's just no way. You can't do it. You can't... Hook shot up to the top floor. You can't recoil flip to the Igor bridge. You can't get giant's mask or anything. Well, first, let me store Song of Time. Like, we, we need at least one. We need at least one uh, remains cutscene skip. So, we got that in store. Alright, so, with our Zorfins back, we can do a jump slash. Jump to their... And then we can get on this little uh, cage around the entrance. And from that, we can jump to here, which brings us to the left side of the temple. And now... This room. Pop.
hot ISG again, which is precise. Get magic, because that's the most useful thing for us. <laughs> and a Poe. I think you know where this is headed. This is the final boss of two paws. There are three Poes in this room, and we're gonna hover off of them. And find our way somehow to Twinmold's loading zone, which is very far away. But I managed to do it in a timely manner. So, the thing about these Poes is that they don't have a constant hitbox. That is. If you walk into them, they don't just, like, hurt you. Which sounds good, but that's actually really bad. Meaning, you can only hover off of them when they're attacking you. Because that's the only time they... <laughs> ...weave something that does damage to your shield. So every hover I do is actually really precise. So here's where I get out of bounds. There's actually a hole in the ceiling. Which is very convenient, because <laughs> just go up and out of there. Yeah, and in normal stone tower, this normally takes you to uh, the room where you shine light on a sunblock. So it all works out. So, something to note with these Poes is that I'm getting a lot of height with them, but I'm not getting much distance. And there's not really anything I can do about that. So, keep in mind, I don't know how well you may have a st Inverted Stone Tower's map in your head, but Twinwald's Loading Zone is really far back from here. Like, consider where I am now, and then think, like, really far back, like, a really long cover. But look at the rate at which I'm doing these backflips. That doesn't make any sense. Like, at this rate, this video is not going to end when it does. But it does, so uh, there's some solution. Another thing to note... Which, uh, if anyone's done the Stone Tower boss key skip normally, with like, not the new one, but back when we used bomb chews and bombs and hovered from the room underneath Igor, like, you'll know that if you, uh, backflip too long, like, if you're over the void too long, you void out. Like, that's the special thing about Stone Towers, uh, voids, I guess. Like, they're time-based. See, normally a void is position-based, where when your Y position is at a certain point, you void out. But here, in Stone Tower, if you're just falling for too long, you're done. So that poses a huge problem. I can't just, like, backflip really high up and hope for the best. So, convenient thing about these Poes, which is pretty easy to point out right now during this part of the hover, is that, one, all the Poes go to whatever your height is. Like, you can see all three Poes are at the same height as you. And two... The Poe will not attack me until he's off the screen. And I got him in a pretty good pattern where he just like spins around in a circle and then attacks me. It's pretty nice. So it looks like this Poe in the background is about to join in on the fun. No, oh, he changed his mind. That's unfortunate. 
They're just kind of chilling in the back. So, there's still quite a ways to go for this boss loading zone, but I'm actually almost done. How could that be if I'm over a time-based void? Also, can I mention just the idea of this, this being in some derivative of an any percent root, hovering off of pose, <laughs> just doing a full on <laughs> several minute long hover off of only enemies in order to beat the game. That is a wonderful sight. Okay, there it is. I do a mega flip just so that it ends right when I'm in bounds. So I don't get timed out. <sighs> a very far mega flip. That just puts me in the room that has the loading zone for uh, Twin Mold. It all works out very nicely. Alright, so, I used Tattle to bring up text. Here's my stored Song of Time text. That's one twin we'll down. Alright, so... Red Twin Mold has full health, meaning he takes 10 arrows to defeat. Let's see how fast I could take him down. I only got 8 on that cycle. I don't know if you were expecting 10, but... This isn't a full TAS. Alright, there you go. Can't expect optimization from me. Alright. So, Twin World is done. And we could actually save and reset <laughs> very early. It didn't even look like he picked it up. Like, that's pretty cool. Alright, so, we're not done yet. We still have to get to the moon. And it doesn't open until midnight on the final day. So that seems like we have a lot of waiting. But, no. I'm in it for the speed, baby. I still have tricks up my sleeve. Also, I got a bomb drop there just to uh, rub it in speedrunners' faces. I don't need bombs. I still got one. Alright, so... We could just make it night three and then wait until midnight, but... There's... there's better things to do. Nobody has time to sit around waiting. Instead, this'll be the last one for here. I do this in the grotto so I don't get the cutscene. Notice how quick they all are. There's no little day transition or anything. So now it's night two. Can Zora clip through that acute angle to get over this fence. Get through it, rather, because there's no other way. Song of, t or song of Double Time before talking to this guy. Why here? Why not in the grotto? Well... He 
interrupts you, and if you cancel out of the telescope, it advances you a whole 24 hours more than it's supposed to. But what's 24 hours more than day 3? Day 4. That's right, not only do we have 0th day in here, we have 4th day. So I exit because I can't play Song of Soaring in there. It just won't let you, so... Exit, play Song of Soaring, go to Clock Tower. What was the point of making it 4th day? Well... <laughs> the Clock Tower door is already open, because day 3 fully passed. So we could just walk right on in there, no waiting. I did it for the speed. Fourth day also has the benefit of having a really pretty pink sky. I love the way it looks, it's nice. So Gorn Ocarina B comes in handy. Just one more time. There we go. Now enjoy this cutscene that I can't do anything. Just gotta sit and eat it. But it does look better with the fourth day sky, so... It'll look nice. If you're wondering if you should watch Majora, yeah, you should. Like, not only is it in a tool-assisted setting, so it's going to be fast, but it's also going to be a little different than any Majora fight you've seen. Not that it needs to be, like, as it stands right now, two paws is solved. There's nothing left in the puzzle. All of the pieces have come together and culminated in such a way that it wound up being possible, and it's been done. There's nothing left to do except the victory lap. Like, that's the thing about Majora, actually. Is that no matter what circumstances you get to the Majora fight with, you can beat it, Majora. Like, I just love the way they did the bosses in this game. You never have to worry about that. It's all in preparation for Moon Warp. When we find Moon Warp, we will be able to meet Majora, no problems. So, get ready for that. You'll be seeing it from me. Why is there still dialogue? They made this cutscene entirely too long. That's a good gasp from the Goron. Goron Link.
<laughs> it looks like he didn't even have a face there. On the moon. Look at that sky. Fourth day is pretty great. A fitting end. Alright, so let's just wreck Majora. This will not take long. Alright, so, normally you can't hit Majora's Mask right in the front, but there are very specific weak spots, I can't speak, very specific weak spots that I don't understand at all. I really don't get it, <laughs> but you can just shoot and get some hits. That was phase one. Now, I can probably assure you that this incarnation strat is likely unseen. I'm not sure of many situations that would do this. So, let's go. nice. I don't even care, like, if that was faster than doing anything else. That was just too good to not let in. Alright, so... Wrath takes 40 normal sword hits. So... It's a pretty long one. So, here is a technique where if you spin the stick before doing a jump slash, you can do one again immediately after, so that you can keep them locked in. But the thing is, I can't just keep doing that, because these masks are brutal, and they keep attacking. Alright, that's it. Dot done. Now Giano, come at me, son. That's two paws. The final time is two hours, 54 minutes, and 38 seconds. Using RTA timing. TAS timing is two hours, 58 minutes, 58 seconds. Because basically, TAS timing is power on to last input, and there's text boxes that still appear, so. Sub 3 all around. Very nice. I had a lot of fun making this, and I really like the final result. So I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Those guys are cheering for this run. It was pretty good.
Okay, so for some reason, that looks completely normal, like normally, but when I recorded it, it got messed up, and I don't know why the dawn of a new day screen, like I have, I have no idea why it, that happened. I guess if I have any last words, I should say them now. I I shouldn't. There's there's really nothing for me to commentate. The whole point of commentary is to provide helpful information so that people can watch this without being really confused. Hopefully, I didn't confuse you or annoy you. So, yeah, I'm not. I'm not done talking though. I, I'm going to talk until the very last input, which is short, shortly from now. Ugh, I, don't, I, I don't really agree with the decision to have so much text at the end, like. Let's be, let's be real here, no one's playing Majora's Mask for the story. I like how Epona's in the credits, like, Epona played a very large role in this route. I don't like how he's here. I don't... His only role in Two Paws was to delay us with cutscenes. Although I guess he made us human, so we should be fair. Last text box is coming up very, very soon. There, that's it. Last input right there. There's no more. Sub three. Two paws. I apologize. Alright, well, I'm done talking. I'm done streaming. Thanks for watching. Later. Yeah, you can just watch the credits if you like.